Hi, I'm Mr. Evans. This video uh, looks at sensitivity analysis. So sensitivity analysis uh, is the um, final part of this quite long unit 3.7 and we're looking at sensitivity analysis in the context of investment appraisal. So we've been looking at investment appraisal and these three different methods that you need to know, payback, average rate of return, and net present value. And uh, we've been using these to uh, calculate the financial viability of a project. Uh, but for each of these methods, we have been saying that the calculation is only as good as the data we are using to calculate it. In other words, if the figures that we're putting in, the predicted cash inflows or outflows are inaccurate, then ultimately the calculation that we do will be inaccurate. So, um, because even the most well-researched figures are subject to changes in the external environment, um, unforeseen circumstances, etc., it's a good idea for a business to play around with the figures and think, well, what will happen maybe in this scenario where costs are increased by 10% or in this scenario where we get less revenue than we thought we would? And sensitivity analysis is a method of doing that. So, uh, we could define sensitivity analysis as a method of assessing the impact of variances in predicted cash inflows and outflows on investment appraisal. So, it's probably easiest to show with an example. Uh, in this example, the investment criteria that the management have set is that they're saying they're not going to do this investment unless the uh, re re predicted average rate of return is 8%. If the average rate of return is 8%, they'll go ahead with this investment, provided there are no other qualitative factors that would prevent them from doing so. So we've been using these figures, um, a project that initially cost 500 million, um, the total revenues predicted from it are to be 750 million, um, against the uh, outflows of 622.5 million. So therefore the, uh, the uh, profit, the um, Investment is expected to be profitable over its lifetime. To calculate the average rate of return, of course, we divide this total profit by the three years and um, that it's going over, and then we divide uh, that figure by the initial cost of the project, and that gives us our average rate of return of 8.5%. So just about the, the management would be uh, reasonably happy probably to go ahead with this project. Um, but that's assuming that these figures are accurate. So before um, going ahead, they, it would be a good idea to just test some of these assumptions, see what happens if these figures aren't accurate. So let's just say that um, maybe uh, we've been very, very cautious with our cash inflows figures, and maybe we could increase our inflows by 20%. Um, uh, what would that look like? And at the same time, we've been really um, harsh with our outflows. We've, we've, we've overestimated our costs, maybe. And perhaps in reality, over the lifetime of the project, our costs will come in 10% less than um, uh, we thought they would. So what would that look like? Well, here are the new figures. Here's the uh, total profitability of the project. Um, we put that through the ARR calculation and suddenly the average rate of return for this project is now looking far more appealing to the managers who are after just an 8% average rate of return. So in this best case scenario, um, they would be very happy. Um, in the worst case scenario, however, let's just say that um, uh, their cash inflows are inaccurate, they've overestimated them by 10% um, and they've underestimated their cash, their outflows by 10%. Or well, in this case, the, the um, project is far, far less profitable overall. Um, and when we put it through the average rate of return calculation, we're only coming in with a figure of 1.68%. So that would be uh, very concerning for management. Now, in this table, I've put all of these um, figures together. Um, and uh, for example, uh, in this box here, I've got, well, what happens if we've got the expected outcome of uh, 750 millimeter, uh, sorry, millimeters, 750 million pounds in, in cash coming in? Um, 
uh, that's the expected outcome, but maybe we save some money on the costs. Well, in that case, the project will generate a 14% uh, average rate of return. You can see all the other figures here that have been uh, calculated. Now, I've highlighted in uh, bold here the figures that would be of most concern. So, um, we've got uh, these outcomes here that, that, that would be an issue. So having a look at this, what might the management think? Well, this investment clearly is uh, risky. In the worst case scenarios, um, it's highly likely that the business would not make a profit because if we get either of the worst case scenarios in terms of inflows or outflows, um, uh, yeah, there's at least two out of the three uh, boxes in here that, that um, are showing an unacceptable average rate of return. So yes, this investment is risky. Um, you know, if the managers are relatively confident in the predictions that the expected outcome uh, will be okay, then, then perhaps they'll press on with it. They might also want to consider their assessment of the external environment. So, um, you know, if the um, economic environment is predicted to be good, there's a higher chance that this best case scenario will come through. It, and it, as long as we get the best case uh, scenario in terms of cash inflows, um, this project will be extremely uh, profitable for the management, even if the worst case occurs in terms of costs. So um, sensitivity analysis is a useful tool um, to use. Obviously, it would be time consuming to do. Uh, but it, given that range of figures, it gives managers a more likely um, picture of what could happen uh, given the um, unpredictable nature of the external environment.